We've uh, just resurveyed 156 dive sites across eastern Tasmania, spanning from Eddiston Point all the way down to Research Bay. Uh, and at these sites we've, we've counted the number of sea urchins on the sea floor and also assessed the, the cover of urchin grazing. Um, and what we've found is that uh, there's been quite a, a strong increase in the uh, abundance of sea urchins and also uh, an even bigger increase in the um, amount of barrens that have now formed on, on these reefs. Sea urchins are, are grazers of kelp. Um, they establish on rocky reefs uh, and when they establish in, in uh, suitably large numbers, uh, they'll switch from feeding passively on drift seaweeds to actually then attacking the attached kelps that are growing on the surface of the reef. So as they um, build up in numbers, they're grazing these kelps down uh, and they form little plaques or little holes within the kelp bed. Uh, and these are what we refer to as incipient barrens. So urchin barrens are basically an underwater desert. So it's where all of the large kelp has been completely stripped bare off the, off the reef and you're just left with a, a barren moonscape essentially, which is dominated by pretty much urchins and that's it. We've looked at ways of um, rebuilding the number of predators on the reef and we, we've shown that if we can um, rebuild and have healthy numbers of predators in the kelp beds in the first instance, we're much more able to keep a lid on the urchin populations. But once the barrens form, um, we really need to take drastic action to, to get the kelp to recover. This is because you may need lots of urchins to overgraze a kelp bed in the first place, but you need relatively few of them to maintain an urchin barren.